Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. In this video, Gerald Salent, an outspoken commentator and trends forecaster, criticizes the actions and statements of various political figures, particularly NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg and New York Mayor Bill de Blasio. Salent expresses his frustration with what he perceives as arrogance and incompetence in their leadership. He also delves into the topic of Ukraine's potential membership in NATO and its implications for global politics. Furthermore, Selen discusses economic concerns, including the Federal Reserve's plans to raise interest rates, the impact on the dollar, and the rising prices of commodities such as oil and housing. He concludes by highlighting the potential risks to the global economy, including the possibility of conflict between Israel and Iran. Let's dive into the details of Selen's commentary. Silent begins by expressing his discontent with Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg and Mayor Bill de Blasio, labeling them as arrogant and incompetent leaders. He questions their titles and refers to them as scumbags who are detrimental to society. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. This guy, this arrogant scumbag, Stoltenberg, who's the uh, head of the Secretary General, of the, Secretary General of the EU, Secretary General, f off, Secretary General. What f***ing bullshit, bullshit f titles they give these clowns. I'm a Secretary General. I'll tell you what to do. Hey, I'm the governor. Close down your f***ing business. No, I'm arrogant. Bill de Blasio, the Warren Wilhelm Jr. I'm the mayor of New York. I'm a scumbag who never worked a day in my fucking life. Been sucking off the public to close down your business. These are the shitheads that are ruining our lives and taking us to war. So the Stoltenberg said that um, the United, they're not going to bring uh, Ukraine into NATO. I think all allies agree that when the war is going on, that's not the time for making Ukraine the full member of our alliance. We also made clear that we will issue an invitation to Ukraine to join NATO when allies agree and the conditions are met. Stoltenberg! Stoltenberg! F face! Go fight over there! All you people that said our f money and armaments to Ukraine, go over there and fight or shut your mouths. So they're not bringing Ukraine into the NATO because if NATO, they come in, then all the NATO got to go to war with Russia, which they already are. That would just make it official. What crap this is. And so uh, Zelensky said that it's absurd that this happened. Yep. It's absurd, he said. So if Zelensky said it's absurd, it must be. So here's the deal. They bring NATO in. This is what the f***ing war is about. Once upon a time, not too long ago, there was a guy by the name of Mikhail Gorbachev who was running the Soviet Union. He broke up the Soviet Union, and the deal he made between the United States... And NATO, when he broke it up and pulled the troops out of Eastern Europe, was that NATO would not move one inch further. There were 16 NATO countries. Now there were 30. Salent addresses Stoltenberg's statement regarding Ukraine's potential membership in NATO. He emphasizes that bringing Ukraine into NATO could lead to increased tensions with Russia potentially leading to a dangerous escalation. He mentions the historical context of NATO's agreement with Mikhail Gorbachev, which stipulated that NATO would not expand further into Eastern Europe. Moving on to economic matters, Silent mentions the Federal Reserve's plan to raise interest rates, anticipating two more hikes. He argues that this decision will weaken the dollar and lead to higher gold prices. Additionally, he highlights the rising price of Brent crude oil suggesting that inflation will persist despite claims of it declining. Sullen points out that while some prices may temporarily decrease, essential items such as housing and automobiles continue to rise in cost. 
they bring Ukraine and th this war is going to keep on going. And we are on the verge of nuclear annihilation. Ukraine's future is in NATO, Stoltenberg said. We fully support Ukraine's right to choose its own security arrangements. Ukraine's future is in NATO, huh? Yep. So the future of the world is at war. Again, the f Europeans, what's your favorite fucking war? World War II? No, I like World War I. Yeah, how about the, 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 the Prussian War? All these fucking wars going on for centuries. For centuries. Oh, and Napoleon left uh, uh, Poland with 420,000 troops in 1812 to attack Moscow. Came back with 10,000. And it goes on. It's unprecedented and absurd when a time frame is not set neither for the invitation nor for Ukraine's membership, while at the same time vague wording about conditions is added even for inviting Ukraine, Zelensky wrote. We are on the verge of a economic collapse. So here's the deal. The Fed says they're going to raise interest rates two more times. The ECB is expected to raise them too. So they meet in July, they raise them in the U.S. They're going to be coming one more time, right? That's the beginning of the death of the dollar. The lower interest rates fall, the weaker the dollar goes, and the higher gold prices go. Oh, and by the way, oil prices, Brent crude, it's back to almost $80 a barrel now. Yeah, that means inflation is going to go back up in a lot of different ways. And inflation's here to stay. When you look at, oh, the prices are coming down, the inflation's going down. The prices of houses aren't going down, they're going back up. An automobile costs almost $50,000 to buy. Hotel prices going up. Motel prices going up. A bunch of food commodity prices going up. Oh, they're going to come down a little bit, but they're still way high. So it predicts that raising interest rates further will negatively impact the economy, leading to a difficult summer period. He mentions the possibility of a wild card event, such as a nuclear conflict or heightened tensions in the Middle East, specifically involving Israel and Iran. The increasing protests in the streets further highlight the discontent and potential for instability. Solent criticizes the portrayal of the Ukraine conflict by highlighting the disparity between predictions of a Ukrainian counteroffensive and the subsequent downplaying of such claims. He refers to the deployment of cluster bombs as a metaphor for the chaotic state of global affairs. In a brief digression, Solent criticizes the media's treatment of certain individuals, such as Julian Assange and Edward Snowden. He questions the lack of coverage on Assange's imprisonment and Snowden's exile, denouncing it as hypocrisy. So now, they, as they raise interest rates, the economy goes down more. So again, it's going to be eased throughout the summertime. We don't see the markets crashing during the summer, minus a wild card, like a nuclear war. Or Israel ramping up the wars in the Middle East, as more and more people keep taking to the streets and protesting what's going on over there. They just passed one of the parts of the Judicial Reform Act, bringing more people out, closing down one of the airports. So when all else fails, they take it off. If Israel goes to war with Iran, you're going to see oil prices go to above $130 a barrel. And that's going to crash the global economy and the equity markets. So on the U Ukraine war trend, war trend update, you had submissed what we had forecast. Ukraine counteroffensive contracting, Russian capabilities underestimated. And again, don't count on the counteroffensive. We warned you about this. We said it was a lot of bullshit, and now they're playing it down. Well, we really didn't start it, but now we're going to start it sometime and we'll let you know when. And again, sending these cluster bombs is a cluster fuck. And that's what we have a bunch of cluster fuckers that are fucking our lives up. This guy uh, who's a Russian correspondent for the Wall Street Journal that was locked up, they call him a spy. That's big, the whole paper. Look at this paper here. Look. All right. How about Assange? How come you're not writing about Assange? He's only been in jail since 2019 and been locked up in that one of the embassies. I think it was El Salvador for what, about 10 years or something. 
Not a word about Assange. How about Snowden? Nah, fuck them. What hip? What hypocrisy? What hypocrisy? Assange didn't do anything. All he did was report stuff. His life ruined. 